Hello, hello, it's Shafiq here. It is Friday. It's Shafiq, the Empowerment Coach. I hope you're doing well. I hope your week's gone pretty well. Let's just say I hope it's gone fantastically well because wherever you were on Monday, maybe apprehensive about the week going forward, you've got through to Friday. So give yourself a round of applause, a little bit of self-love, a little bit of appreciation for all that hard work you've put in. So who is this guy here who's upbeat and chipper? My name is Shafiq Villasanti and I'm a coach, a, uh, a speaker and an author, an author of this book. There's no shame, okay. You can grab it by www.shafiqempowermentcoaching.co.uk and go to Amazon and grab it on the Kindle or on the Audible. But most importantly, I am the survivor of two suicide attempts. That's right, I said it. I am the survivor of two suicide attempts. I'm not gonna be quiet about it. I'm not gonna um, cower in a corner over it. I'm not gonna be ashamed of it. And I said it confidently and upbeat, and why should I not speak like that? Because let's be honest, I am here, and this is what I'm passionate about doing, is breaking down those stigmas and taboos associated with poor mental health and giving a, 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 an insight, a snapshot, a, um, a window into the world of somebody who might be struggling. And both my attempts were 10 years apart, first one in 2006, second one in 2016. So I can talk about it from first-hand experience. I am relatable in every shape, way, or form. I know about the dread, I know about the fear, I know about the dark moods, I know about the heaviness, I know about, in my case, the snap decisions on those Friday nights, those 10 years apart, upon which, upon which I did what I did. And exactly the thought process, like exactly where it takes you and how desperate and how lonely and how fearful and how ashamed I felt of how I was feeling. But I also know about how I turned my life around and how I am the person I am now. And it's a positive story. It's a positive take on poor mental health. And the reason for this is this coming Saturday, that's tomorrow, guys and girls, is the 10th of October. It's World Mental Health Day. And it is a spotlight on us talking and sharing and being more open, shall we say, hopefully, to accepting, yes, accepting that this is going on and through what we're living through at the moment, I'm sure it's more prevalent than ever and people will be struggling with their thought processes, will still be struggling with their moods, will be overwhelmed by what potentially might be happening in the world and at times it can become very, very oppressive. So my reason for this and these blogs this week is to give you an insight, as I said, into how to recognise, how to cope, how to overcome and how to take yourself out of those um, areas, moods, whatever you want to call it. Okay, so today we're going to be talking about how to, I guess, recognise it and how to signpost people to help. Okay, the biggest thing you can do, as I've always said, is have those conversations. As I've always said, and I'm repeating myself, but if it's the first time coming to me, hit that smash. As they, they say it, don't they, in YouTube land? Smash that bell icon, hit that like, subscribe, place a comment. Um, you've got two of these. Two of these and one of these. And that's what my wife had. And as I always said, she wasn't medically trained. She's not a doctor. She's not a psychiatrist. But she listened and she spoke and she showed that she cared. And for me, I ran away. For those 10 years in between my suicide attempts, I didn't speak about it. But it was here. It was my skeleton in my, in my closet. I didn't want to burden my wife and my two kids and my immediate family or anybody about it. But when I needed that support most, that second time after I'm hurtling towards that wall at 50 miles now, wanting to check out, I open up for the first time. And that's something we can all do. We can all have that dialogue. We can all put that arm around somebody. We can all say, how are you doing? And if you don't want to say, how are you doing? Because you think, oh, I'm treading on eggshells. Chris, Christina, Luke, Louisa, Leah, L's and C's there for, for names, do you fancy going out for a coffee? Do you fancy going out for a pizza? Do you fancy going out for a walk? You know, it's, it's autumnal, autumnal sunshine out here at the moment. The, the leaves are turning beautiful colours. They're crispy under feet. Lovely fresh air. Not too hot, not too oppressive. Beautiful autumnal days here. Do you fancy just going out for a walk? And then that's when the conversations can start. How are you doing? Is everything okay? I'm, you know, use yourself as somebody as a barometer. You know, I'm, I'm, I sometimes I feel a bit flat. You know, and and you know, I think it's everything that's going on. And then you start to open that dialogue. But as I've said, and I will say again, and read the book. It's such a life tool. If somebody had opened up to me, if somebody had acknowledged the fact I was struggling, those both those Friday evenings, ten years apart, and said, "Are you doing all right, Shafiq? Do you fancy going for a coffee, or do you just fancy going out for a walk? You know, take yourself out of the office." I'd have seen that somebody cared, and that I mattered. But instead, people just let me get on falling apart 
and um, maybe they were unsure, maybe they were worried, maybe they thought they might say the wrong thing. But if somebody doesn't reach out to you and show that you that you matter, and if you feel like you don't matter, and you feel like nobody cares, then you feel worthless, and you feel, what is the bloody point of carrying on? Because nobody nobody gives a, a rats about me, and that's how I felt, and that's how that mindset is. Because when you're feeling that low, you have no self esteem. You have no self esteem. But I'll tell you this, and I'll tell you this now, the strongest thing I ever did was actually see through what I did. And that's something not to be ashamed of. And I said that, the strongest thing I ever did was actually see through both those actions. Because that takes, that takes commitment, that takes courage. And as much as for me it was a snap decision, nobody, nobody, not everybody can do that. But I was blessed to be given a third chance and I've taken it with both hands and what I do day to day, as you say, it's in power and I coach and I and I speak passionately about it. So don't be judgmental. Don't, if you know somebody who's struggling, be judgmental and why it's happened that was never happened to me. We are all unique and we're all different. And that's what makes us so amazing. And we all have the ability to be compassionate, to be considerate, to be understanding. We've done it through COVID. We've shown that we we can all take charge of this. We might not, I don't know the neighbours 16 roads down the road or 14 houses up the road, but you know what? I've stayed indoors. I've worn my gas, my gas mask. I've worn my mask. I've put my hand sanitizer on. I've stayed indoors. I've looked after myself, my loved ones and my, and my neighbourhood. So we all have the ability, do we not, as we've shown, to look after one another. So have those conversations. And by having those conversations and by making it known, as I did, because I understood that I was that one in four that was struggling with mental health conditions. And I was a guy. And we all know the rates of, of, of chaps here, especially in the UK. And I'm sure worldwide it's every bit as, every bit as high. But here in the UK, the highest rate of, of uh, the highest growing rate of those individuals that are unfortunate enough to actually succeed in, as I call it, checking out, are guys between 24 and 40. But equally alarming, the highest growth in the last year has been between girls between the age of 11 and 20 and it's only going to get worse the less we show that we care the less that we show that we talk so we've got young kids that haven't even started their lives struggling and periodically and on an annual basis the highest number that are as i say checking out are guys and everyone is a, is, is a tragedy and everyone potentially is, is, is a life loss that could have been saved by us talking openly and reaching out. So if you're here in the UK and if you're here in Surrey, but it makes no odds, I'm talking on a UK base, I'm based here in the United Kingdom. There are so many places you can signpost. I guess worldwide we have you would have similar things, but I'm talking on a UK basis here. Um, here in Surrey, I was put in contact with something called the Recovery College, which now I facilitate and I coach. Uh, I was put in contact with Surrey Borders. I was put in contact with Mind Matters, obviously the Samaritans, and crucially the GP. Don't ever, ever, ever think that if you are reaching out to the GP, they will not take you seriously. Don't ever think because you feel this way, they won't take you seriously because somebody has used the word, I'm feeling a bit depressed, and watered down the actual severity of it. There is depression, there is clinical depression, and there is somebody saying, I feel a bit flat because the cars failed its MOT. I went knocking on that door twice in 2006 and 2016. I had this, this amazing support from a GP in 2016 what was pivotal in me kicking this into touch. So don't think you're wasting their time because they generally do have your best interest at heart. And talking to the um, organizations that I mentioned, Recovery College, Mind Matters, um, the Samaritans, and the other bits and pieces here in Surrey were pivotal, as I always say, in, in, in seeing that improvement in me and talking to other people. Once you get it open, it's like a monkey off your back and that you're not ashamed. And in some ways, from that head being down and you're looking at the floor, you start to hold your head up and put your chest down, your shoulders back and think, you know what? This is me. I'm making a go of this. And then you start to feel better about yourself. You start to read better things. And, and as you start to grow and evolve into this new person that you've created because you're feeling better, you start to be attracted to things that make you feel better. And in a lot of, system, in a lot of ways, um, that depression, that anxiety, that low self-mood, that those suicidal thoughts as I all had clinically had, were attributed to how I found myself living. There was no alcohol. There was no drugs. There was no 
affairs or anything like that. I was just working crazy hours in a very dictatorial place, um, which wasn't good for me. And that environment I found myself in created this low mood that just festered and festered and got worse and worse and worse. And that's not only in a professional working environment, it can also be in your relationship. It can be in a, in, 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 in a life situation that you find yourself in. It's almost like a PTSD, and people did refer to me as suffering from PTSD. I haven't been in a war zone. I haven't been on a battlefield. I tip my hat to those people that do, absolutely. But when you're living under a prolonged amount of stress and um, a prolonged amount of uh, aggression, passively or non-passively, and you are just living like the year after year, then it starts to eat away at you. So you find on your journey out of it that you'll start to remove yourself away, that you won't be interested in other people's dramas. You won't be interested in seeing dramas on TV. You will be mindful of what you listen to and how you hear and how you think. But this is the big thing. You'll be mindful of where you see yourself. So in 2016, I was a gibbering, quivering wreck, taking, taking lots of medication, seeing the psychiatrist, feeling like I didn't know what was going on in my life. But the one thing that was consistent was that I was able to press pause on my life and think, you know what, I've got to get out of this. And where do I see myself? And by pitching myself in a better place, enabled me to keep chasing. And every step I took, every baby step I took, ultimately led to the journey that I was on and the journey that I'm on now. Okay, so I won't take up any more of your time. Um, tomorrow is World Mental Health Day, so I'll be putting out a blog for tomorrow. Remember, please like, please share, please subscribe. Please comment, hit that bell icon. Let's get this message out there. Let's have a positive take on mental health. Let's get the message in and around World Mental Health Day that we're going to talk, we're going to beat this, and we're not going to shy away from it. So thanks for your love and support. I'll catch up with you tomorrow. Have a great day. Have a great Friday. Catch up with you on Saturday. Take care. Cheers. Bye.